So this video is going to be slightly different. Because instead of building a project, I want to show you the parts behind one. So when you're watching a maker YouTube video, you're only seeing the construction and maybe a tiny bit of problem solving. You're only really seeing about 30% of the work. And what you're missing out on is the initial ideation, the research, any development, testing of materials, joint construction methods, the exploration of the dimensions and proportions. What you're missing out on is 70% of the project. And I would argue is in this area where the project is really made. So I'm going to try and tell you that story, starting out with what sparked the initial idea. So I was walking down the street, as I'm doing right now, and I noticed one of the brackets that hold up fencing posts. And I thought about using that bracket either as it is or with a very small modification to attach table legs and stretches together and therefore create an extremely strong yet accessible joint. And then a couple of days later, I noticed what's called an Aris rail bracket. And in a similar way, I thought I could redefine its context to one furniture. So my basic idea, my basic premise, was imagine if I could take a bracket that not only already exists, but is available to a massive percentage of the population, and turn it into something so that ordinary people who have limited skills and limited tools can make their own furniture. However, it's only when I actually went to the hardware store and started getting hands on with the brackets that I realised it wasn't going to be such a straightforward transfer. And that's because they just aren't made the type of forces involved in furniture. So I went back to the drawing board. I did some developing, coming up with a variety of different purpose-made bracket designs, making sure that they could be made in as simple way as possible so that they could keep that essence of simplicity and accessibility. So now the concept is really starting to be finalised, I can begin working and realising it. Starting out with the dimensions and proportions. made various different sized pieces of dimensional timber and it's really important to me that they're dimensional because if you've got the time and you've got the tools and the expertise to start making your own size pieces there's not really the same kind of justification for having the bucket in the first place. Decided I'm going to build on the 2 by 3 and the 2 by 2 in rough top. Now, so now I've worked out the size of the timber I'm using, I can take measurements from it to determine the size of the bracket.
can explain my thought processes behind them and also how I developed along the way. So this is obviously made out of two pieces of two mil mild steel and it's held together with bolts which thread through the different holes I've drilled at each side. And as effective as this is at holding the legs and stretches in place, it also kind of goes against that ethos I was just talking about because you need a drill to create the holes and if you've got a drill, although it wouldn't be as strong, you could just screw all the legs together. And the other thing I don't really like about this bracket is because the pieces are folded exactly around the shape of the leg and stretcher, any slight variations in thickness result in a lot of flex and wobble. And the second bracket was even more of a failure than the first. And that's because any side to side movement in the structure is channeled into one extremely weak joint. And I was way too ambitious with my internal fold and consequently couldn't get it to 90 degrees and have gaps on both edges. Although all this being said, I did solve the problem of having two independent pieces by folding over the sheet steel. And so that's a feature I consequently brought into the next bracket. The fold creates a box that the stretcher can fit into and I've also folded the internal edge to create a return that supports the leg. And the big change between this bracket and the previous ones is that instead of trying to fold around the internal contours of the structure and leg, I folded one continuous piece of metal to meet the external one. And what this allows is not only the easier construction, but it also is a lot stronger because any side to side play is being channeled into one continuous piece of metal. But of course there's always got to be one problem, and this one comes from the fact that other than friction, nothing is actually holding the pieces in place. And so to solve that problem, with the fourth bracket, I folded the steel all the way round so that the stretcher could be boxed in place and held securely. And I think I should also note here that I've extended the leg section slightly when compared to the previous versions. And I think this is really effective at A, providing a little bit of extra strength and B, just giving a visual indicator of where the leg should be. And so now I'm going to try and take all the different features I like from each bracket and amalgamate them to solve the different problems I've encountered. So the plan is to have sides that fold all the way around and consequently hold the stretches in place. However, this time I'm going to weld the bottom edges so that it's completely secure. And then I'm going to extend the returns all the way out so that they meet in the middle and again, weld them close. And I'm gonna keep the extended leg section for added strength in that visual cue. And then finally, I'm gonna drill holes at various locations that bolts are gonna be threaded through. And this is just gonna help account for any slight variations in thickness of the timber, and so that the whole joint remains extremely secure. <laughs> laying the net out, I am trying to keep everything as compact as possible so that I can use the material efficiently. makes it a lot easier to get a much tighter fold. So now I've created the form, I just need to weld the edges closed Grind them flush, 
and then I can start drilling and threading holes that the bolts will go through. definitely been a journey getting here, thinking back to my initial observation with the fence post, but I am really really happy with what we've come up with. There's a few things I'd like to change, like it would be good if I could turn the bolts into wing nuts so they're a little bit easier to tighten by hand, and I also need to do some work on the colour scheme, but overall I think it was a successful project, and um, I hope you enjoy kind of this new video format, and stay tuned to my channel in a couple of weeks I'm going to have the full build video using these brackets.